Okay, so then let's uh, discuss the next question, next situation. So, next situation, we have the doctor. The doctor has a tent, two tents, or there was a war, you understand war. But we have five people who have a very serious injury. One needs a heart transplant. One needs a liver transplant. One needs a kidney transplant. Do you understand that, these things? Yes. Parts of the body, right? And so on and so on. So five people need a transplant. If they don't get a transplant, they have 24 hours. Do you understand transplant? How do you say transplant in Korean? So they have 24 hours to get the transplant, otherwise they're going to die, okay? So, uh, now, you're a doctor, you are a doctor, and then somebody comes to your office for a checkup. Do you understand checkup? Check up, just you go to the doctor once a year. So somebody comes into the office. <laughs> doctor. What? I, I came from my yearly check up. Right? What are you going to do? If you kill the person, you can take all their organs, you can save the five people. Right? Do you understand? Yes. If you kill this one person, you can take all their organs and save five people. So discuss with your group. What are you going to do? You're going to kill this person? You're going to kill one of them? Okay, so that's smart, right? You think that's okay, you're going to kill one of these anyway, they're going to die. Use all their organs as a transplant. Okay? So, Anye the last time you said that in order to save five people, 
<laughs> you would push the guy off the, <laughs> the bridge, right? What about this time? Would you kill the person to save five people? The last time you killed the fat guy to save five people by just pushing off the bridge. This time you just need to give an injection, lethal injection, or else just stab with the knife. You're not going to do this time? But why not? The consequence you can save five people. Why did you change your mind? Destiny. For all these people to die? <laughs> change your mind? Her argument convinced you? You allowed your mind to be changed? So that's a good point. Right. Allow yourself to be convinced by the other people? <laughs> Well, that's the thing, of course it's wrong to kill the person, right? So it's a murder. So in my case, I wouldn't do that, because it's the wrong thing to do. Right? So it means that my philosophy is more on the rights-based philosophy. So some people have different philosophies. Some people think about the consequence, some people think about the rights. So I find that sometimes I have often have different opinions than people who thinks that the consequences is better. For example, in economics, you get the same argument, okay? Recently, we had the idea of bailing out the banks. Do you understand bailing out the bank? The bank failed and the government gave a lot of money to them, called bailout, right? So some people said that's the wrong thing to do. You shouldn't give the money to the banks like that because they, they're failed companies. They should be allowed to fail, right? They were corrupt and they did bad things. So we should allow the bank to fail. That's the wrong, because that's the right thing to do. Okay? But other people would say, well, what's the consequence if we allow the bank to fail? If we allow the bank to fail, a lot of people could lose their jobs. Okay? So, we are thinking about the consequences. Do you understand? So don't allow the bank to fail. Save the banks. Okay? So you always have that kind of discussion between people who has different moral philosophy. Okay? I might say, no, let the bank fail because that's right and it will give the good example for people in the future not to make those kind of mistakes, okay? And anyway, I don't care about the consequence. Just it's the right thing to do, so let's do it, okay? But other people, uh, who do you think does better in politics, usually? People with rights-based moral philosophy or people with consequence-based moral philosophy? Who do you think does better in politics? Hmm? I'm a politician, right? I want to make, keep the people happy. Am I going to do better if I use rights-based moral philosophy or consequence-based moral philosophy? Consequence-based, right? So many politicians work on consequence-based, right? I'm a politician, I think it's right to close down the bank, let the bank fail. Okay, that's the right thing to do, so I'm going to do that. But a lot of people lose their jobs. Am I going to get voted for the next time? Is anybody going to vote for me? No. Maybe not, right? But I'm not that worried about what's the right thing to do, right? I'm worried about what's the best consequence. Then, people keep their jobs, they're happier. Are they going to vote for me in the next election? Yes, right? So we can have that kind of issue. It's just a point that just in politics you might find more people who has the consequence-based philosophy than rights-based philosophy. Okay? So next one is a story about the uh, US military in Afghanistan. So the US military is in Afghanistan. Okay, you guys did military service. Okay, so imagine that. It's you, you are in the Korean military and you're in Afghanistan, okay? Let's say it's the Korean military. Uh, so you have a company of, of 30 people. Do you understand company? Yeah. Company is the group in the army, army okay? So you are the leader. Okay, now in the night time you're getting a secret attack on the ISIS. Do you understand secret? Mm -hmm. On the... You're going to catch us. You think you're going to catch Osama bin Laden, right? You want to catch Osama. Do you know Osama bin Laden? Yeah. So this is a real situation that happened. 
in Afghanistan. Okay? <coughs> so real situation. So uh, you meet some goat herds. Do you understand goat herds? They are minding the goats. Okay? There's two goat herds. Now you know that if you let the goat herd go, there's a chance that they are going to run immediately. Right? You're here. All your you're here. You're planning an attack over here. Okay? And you meet the goat herd. You see the goat herd here. Okay? Now the goat you let them go, they could go and tell them, oh the Americans are coming, or the Koreans are coming. Okay? But it's a top secret mission. You have 30 people with just basic equipment, so you have no rope to tie them up. No way to tie you have no and anyway it's desert, so you have no way to tie them. Do you understand tie tie them? Okay, so you have the choice. Just let them go or do something like break their legs or kill them, right? So they can't move. Maybe break their legs, they could make a sound and they could hear the sound. Okay? So what are you going to do? Discuss with your discuss with your group. You're the leader. You're the leader of a group of 30 people. This has really happened in the desert. I'll tell you the results later. Okay? What they did and what happened in the end. So, you have 30 people about to attack the position of the Taliban or the ISIS. So, you, if you let them go, they could tell the enemy. The enemy is prepared and all of your people could die and you could die because they're ready and they'll shoot you. Okay? Or else you don't have anything to tie them up and you have to move quickly. You don't have much time to think. Okay? So you can just kill them. Kill them or do something like then they're not going to send you and you're you're sure that you're not in any danger. So what are you going to do? So it's a question between what's right and the consequences. You don't have you don't have time to tie up the gold words or put something in their mouth, like in the Hollywood movie. You don't have time. You just have the choice to kill them or let them go. Right? So no other option. <laughs> Okay, so Chang Min Young, what are you going to do? Why? Four people may die. Okay, so let's so show of hands who's going to kill the goat herds? Who's not going to kill the goat herds? Nobody is not going to kill. Hmm? Okay, so in the real life what happened was the guy didn't kill the goat herds, he let them go. And then now he regrets the decision because the goat herds went directly to tell them the Americans were coming. And then most of his company died. And he got some injury in the attack. Okay? So, hmm? was their destiny? Yes, I'm not sure about that. I, I did have more philosophy, but I thought I already disproved. I thought I already disproved that theory of moral philosophy by giving the example of a drowning person. But obviously, 
But of course, just like that guy, a lot of people are not going to kill the gophers, right? Because they say they're innocent people and they, you know, that's, they could be in trouble for war crimes, actually, at the end. As the leader, if you have gave the order to kill the innocent people, you could be in trouble, you could go to jail, right? For war crimes. Okay? So, we have those different arguments. So, next question. Suppose a bomb has been planted in New York City and it will explode in 24 hours unless the police are able to find it. Okay? So this could be a situation these days we saw in Belgium or in France, right? Uh, so there's a bomb and the police need to get some information from the suspected bomber about the location of the bomb. They don't know where it is. Okay? Do you think they can torture them or not? To get torture, do you understand torture? Yeah. Torture, like in the, they can, you know, use some, like you might see in the movies, right? Like Taken or that kind of movie. Okay, use some torture to get the information, or don't use torture. So discuss with your partner. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> the suspected bomber. So you caught the bomber. You caught the bomber, but he won't tell you where the bomb is. He tells you there's a bomb, it's going to go off in 24 hours. Do you think it's okay to torture him or not? To get the information. the movie Taken with Liam Neeson. Oh. Hmm? He's trying to find his daughter. Did you watch that movie? Huh? Do you know the movie Taken? Did you watch the movie Taken? Yeah, he, he tortured some guys, right? To get the information. So are you going to do that or not? <laughs> Why? 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 Hitting with a pen? In the head? Mm -hmm. Point is, it's quite gruesome, right? Torture. It's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. So, torture is against human rights. And we can see that the US was also in trouble because of some torture of prisoners, like waterboarding. Waterboarding is they put their. some cloth over their face and put them in the water so they feel like they're drowning and then take them out and they think they're drowning, it's very bad, or sleep deprivation, not allowing them to sleep, or putting them in a very small box, that kind of thing, right? But all of that, again, is not allowed 
all of the countries have signed a convention on torture. We talked before about international convention, right? International treaty. All countries agreed that we won't do any torture. Okay, and the US signed the treaty. So the US is in a little bit of trouble about that at the moment, right? But again, this is a different situation. If we only have 24 hours and there's a bomb, we're sure there's a bomb, it's hard to say which is the right answer. And then the last question is one of the cases. You are in the Second World War. It's the end of the Second World War. Uh, you're in the US. Albert Einstein has just developed the atomic bomb. You understand the atomic bomb? Yes. But you're, Japan is still fighting. Okay? Japan is still fighting. And Japanese samurai culture, they're not going to surrender. Right? They're going to keep fighting until everybody dies. Okay, so what are you going to do? If you continue the war for years, a lot of people could die, right? In the war, both innocent people and the soldiers. Or you could drop the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and another city, kill 100,000 innocent people, and try to get Japan to surrender. What are you going to do? Harry Truman was the president of the US at the time. So you are Harry Truman in 1945. Okay, he had to make the decision: use the atomic bomb or not on Japan. Okay, what would you what would you do if you were Harry Truman? Not an easy decision to make, right? So <laughs> What's called the dilemma? Dilemma means all of the situations are bad. Okay. Okay. Because they think it is very impressive. This class is very impressive because of this case. Ah, I see. Dilemma. Okay, so in the real life, of course, Harry Truman had, you know, days and weeks to think about that. You just have a couple of minutes. Okay, so... <laughs> Oh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Why not? Okay. So, these days, countries don't use atomic weapons anymore, right? The main reason that the US used the atomic weapon then, and not in the Korean War, was the US was the only country with an atomic weapon. Okay, so if we look through history, you know the crossbow. So always the invention of some new weapon. First country could make some big advantage when they first develop some new weapon. Okay? Then the other country catch up, take the same weapon, then there's some stalemate. Okay? So in the Korean War, they also thought about using the atomic bomb. Did you know that? The U.S. also thought about using the atomic bomb in the Korean War. Do you know why they didn't use the atomic bomb on China in the Korean War? The main reason the U.S. didn't drop an atomic bomb on China during the Korean War? Yes, they thought Russia had also... They weren't sure, but they thought maybe Russia had developed a, also developed an atomic bomb. 
So if they bombed China, then maybe <coughs> Russia would have used the atomic bomb on the US. Okay? So nowadays, uh, of course, we have the nuclear treaty, again, treaty, like torture treaty, where the country shouldn't use the atomic weapons. Okay? So anyway, is there one right answer to all of these questions? Or are there different right answers? Can we say for each of these questions, this is one right answer, definitely? No. No, right? So we can see the problem. If we can look at all of these situations, we can have different answers based on our moral philosophy. Okay? So let's look at the different main types of the moral philosophy. The first one is, so you can, sit, you can turn your desk back again. We're finished with the discussion part. Okay? So, first one is consequentialist moral reasoning. Can you spell consequentialist? Can you spell that? Can I ask you? A long word, right? This uh, locates morality in the consequences. So they think the most moral thing is the thing which has the best consequences. So they are going to choose kill the, pa kill the patient and save the five people. Okay? They're going to choose kill the go girls. They're going to choose uh, use the atomic bomb. Okay? Because maybe it save, saves less, more lives if we use the atomic bomb. Okay? They think there will be, they're thinking about the sum of happiness. People's sum of happiness, also called utility. So utility means what's the most happy most people can be. Okay? Utility, the most happy most people can be. So they're thinking about utility. Which result would mean more happiness for more people? That's the right answer, according to them. Okay? But there's a little bit of a problem with this. So, consider the examples of the Romans throwing people to the lions in the Colosseum. Do you know about the ancient Romans? They used to, to put the prisoners, you understand prisoner? They used to throw them to the lions for, to die for people's entertainment, because people got some entertainment from that. Okay? So, if we are thinking just about the consequences, what do you think? Is this okay? So, a lot of the spectators get great pleasure from watching the person being killed by lions. And they're going to be killed anyway, right? Maybe just have their head chopped off. Is this okay? So just discuss with your partner. You think is that okay? For a utilitarian, it's like somebody who's thinking of the consequences. So somebody who only thinks is of the consequences. Do you think they might agree with this, idea, this policy of the Romans? Rome, you can visit the Colosseum, it's a very big uh, place where the Romans had the old fighting of the gladiators and mm, throwing people to the lions. <laughs> so, Hohen, what do you think? Do you think that people who have very consequence thinking might say that's okay because a lot of people get pleasure from the, and anyway that person is going to die. Utilitarian means utility means most people most happy. Okay, do you understand? Most people most happy. So if we're in the Colosseum, maybe we can get a hundred thousand people and be happy. Okay? Do you understand? One person thrown to the line, they're not happy. 
right? They want us to get killed just by getting their head cut off, not by getting killed by lions, okay? You think what the utilitarian thinks that what makes most people the most happy is this one person's not happiness the same as 1,000 people's happiness, 100,000 people's happiness? Can they balance out or not? What do you think? They don't balance out? Which one is bigger? Which one makes most people most happy? First one? So you think yes, that if you are thinking of the consequences, and you think what makes most people most happy, in this case we control this person to the lions, for our entertainment. Right? Yeah. So, that's quite, that could be quite uh, violent, right? Well, it could even go that far. Consequential moral reasoning can even go that far, okay? If we're thinking about what makes most people most happy. So the Romans may have used that kind of one, right? Categorical moral reason puts things in categories, right? Mm. One of the, do you know the Ten Commandments? The Jewish people and also the Christian people have the Ten Commandments from God. He told them to Moses, like, you shall not kill, right? You shall not steal from other people. So often in religion, we have a list of commandments or things that we have to follow without thinking about the consequences. Just don't do that, okay? So that's a little bit like this one. People think something is right or wrong. Also human rights, we have human rights. Shouldn't go against that. So these people we could call libertarians. They think people have certain fundamental individual rights that are so important that no government can override them such as liberty and property. So these people are not going to kill the, not going to push the fat man, they're not going to kill the patient, they're not even going, they're not going to torture the bomb suspect. Why? Because torture is against the fundamental individual rights, okay? Fundamental right, no torture, okay? Is a fundamental right. So they're going to say, no torture for this person, okay? That's just completely against their fundamental rights. So they will take that different line on all of the questions. So they think that persons should not be used as a means for the welfare of others because doing so violates the fundamental right of self-ownership. My life, labor, and person belong to me and me alone. So they are not, I cannot be used by society. Society can't use me. We'll talk about this is Kant's idea. Okay? So Aristotle thinks that point of law is to shape character and to make people choose the virtues or the correct way of living. For Kant is not virtue. Do you know Kant, a German philosopher? Immanuel Kant. Okay? He thinks it's to set up, the law is made to set up some rights with which, within which citizens can be free to pursue their own ideas of good for themselves. So law, according to Kant, law is a framework of rights. So we have a lot of laws. <coughs> so he was, this was his uh, time when he lived. So. The main word that sums up Kant's ideas is dignity. Do you understand dignity? We translated that before in the class. How do you say dignity in Korean? <coughs> Did you check in neighbor Sajon? Hmm? Dignity is an important word to understand. How do you say? Yeah, it's what we're talking about. Dignity is summed up by what we said on the last slide. Okay? Every, every person has the right of self-ownership. My life and person belong to me and me alone. Okay? So dignity means I am a free person and I belong to me, not to society. Okay? So I have my own dignity. So the, his idea of human dignity informs the present-day notion of universal human rights. OK? 
Okay, so human rights, actually 500 years ago, torture was much more common. Okay, so after the Second World War, we had the UN Declaration on Human Rights. Okay, so that means that it's like an idealistic document which says what people should and shouldn't do. And those kind of human rights are based on this idea of Kant, the idea that everybody has dignity. So we shouldn't torture anybody because of their dignity. Okay? So respecting human dignity means treating people as an end, not as a means. So we're not treating them as a means, means we're, we're using them to get something else. So we shouldn't use people to get something else. We should treat them as the ends. So Kant says lying to your mother out of concern for her feelings would be using her as a means for her own contentment rather than to respect her as a rational being. So for example, uh, you tell a lie to your mother about your brother. Your brother was in trouble, okay? He had some problem with the police, but you don't want to make your mother sad, you want her to be happy. So you tell her, no, no, there was no problem. Okay? No problem with the police. It's lying. But Kant says that that's wrong. Because you're not treating your mother like a rational being. You understand? You're not treating her with respect. You should always, according to Kant, you should never lie. Okay? Because lying is not treating the other person with respect or dignity. It's using them as a means. So he thinks it's wrong to use people for the sake of general welfare. So according to utilitarianism, or the consequence idea, we can push the guy off the bridge. We can kill the goat herds, right? We can use people in order to make better results for society, generally. But according to Kant, no, because they are a person who, who should be respected. Okay? So, for example, pushing the heavy man onto the track to block the trolley uses him as a means. So we push the guy off the track, he's a means. He's like a way. We're using him. Do you understand to use somebody? We're using them like a thing almost. Okay? So we shouldn't use people like things like that. Okay? So we, we're not respecting the man or his dignity. Okay? It's not very dignified to push him off the bridge. So Kant would not push the guy off the bridge, okay? If we act out of some motive other than duty, doing something because it's right, not because it's useful or convenient, then our action is not, it lacks moral worth. So according to Kant, we should do something because it's right, not because it, we get some good result, okay? So he's, he's on the libertarian side. So an example is, a child goes into the grocery store to buy some bread. The grocer, who's selling the bread, the shopkeeper, could overcharge the child, and the child wouldn't know. Do you understand overcharge? Charge a higher price. Okay? The grocer realizes that if other people discovered that he took advantage of the child in this way, then he, word might spread and hurt his business. So this is taken from Kant's book. Kant wrote this example, okay? So Kant says that this example, the shopkeeper thinks, oh, I won't overcharge the child because if I overcharge the child, I get some bad consequence for myself, okay? People will find out, <coughs> then people will think I'm bad and they won't buy from the shop, okay? So for this reason, he decides not to overcharge the child. The shop, but Kant doesn't like this. Right? Kant says the shopkeeper is only honest because of his own self-interest. Okay? So he doesn't like that pe a lot of time people might be honest only because it's in their own interest or it's the best consequence for them. He thinks people should be honest because it's the right thing to do, not because it's in their own interest. So do you have any question about so far about Kant's idea about the dignity? or doing something because it's right. So, 
Kant thinks people should be free. What's Kant's idea of freedom? We don't need to know this kind of vocabulary, heterogeneous <coughs> determination, right? That's just from Kant's book. This means doing something for the sake of something else. And something for the sake of something else. So for example, we go to college to get a, a higher paid job. This is Kant's idea that humans are free. I can decide to do something with my life, whatever I want. Okay? And usually people do something to get something else. Okay? So this is Kant's idea of freedom. <coughs> so Kant said that it's wrong to lie. So somebody asked him a question. They asked Kant, what about if there's a murderer at the door, comes to the door, knocks on the door, and he asks you, where's your brother? Okay? Do you understand murderer? I do say murderer in French. Is that him, right? He has a gun, right? And he's at the door and he asks you, where's your brother? Right? What are you going to say? Upstairs? <laughs> he's playing the computer. <laughs> Don't forget to knock on the door first. Right? What are you going to say? Are you going to lie? Say, oh, he's not here. Hmm? I don't know where he is. What are you going to do? Are you going to lie? Or tell them the truth? Or is there another way? So hands up, who's going to tell them the truth? My brother is upstairs. <laughs> hands up. Who's going to lie and say, he's not here? He's not here, right? Can anybody find another way? How do you think Kant got out of this question? So Kant says, lying to the murderer is wrong, because he thinks the murderer is a human. He has dignity. So the Salinja is worthy of respect. Why? Because he's human and has dignity. So Kant is not going to lie to him, because it violates the principle of right. Okay? He said, truthfulness in statements that cannot be avoided is the formal duty of man, however great the disadvantage that may arise therefrom for him or for any other. So that's from his book. So he's not going to lie. Okay, but what Kant might say is try to avoid the question a little bit. Okay? He might say, well, two hours ago he was down in the shop in the town. Is that a lie? No, it's true, right? His brother was in the town two hours ago in the shop. Okay? So he's not going to lie to the guy directly or else he's not going to answer. <coughs> so we can see the exaggeration on this side too. Right? We saw the exaggeration on the utilitarian side. Are we going to throw somebody to the lions just to get entertainment for more people? On this side, are we going to be honest 100% even though the murderer is at the door? Okay. So we can see the, the issues with both of the types of moral philosophy. So then, uh, let's finish there for today. <laughs>